In this video, we're doing another key comic book spotlight, and this time on everybody's favorite X-Men, Wolverine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, I'm going to do another key comic book spotlight, this time on everybody's favorite X-Men, Wolverine. Now, if you're new to the series, Key Comic Book Spotlight, what I do is I take a random superhero or supervillain and just point out five key or grail uh, comic books that the comic book collecting community often pursues when they're fans of this character. So, you know, the video isn't here necessarily to identify spec, uh, but more so it's going to be something that's kind of academic so that, you know, new comic book uh, collectors and readers who stumble across the series can get a, a sense of what are some of the, the grail and key comic books uh, for their favorite character. But before I get into my picks for this video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying my content, uh, do one of those things, help support the channel. Really, really great talking to you guys and interacting online. So would appreciate it if you did one of those things. All right, with that being said, let us get into my five picks here for Wolverine. And uh, actually, uh, let, let me correct myself. Let me get into my six picks here for Wolverine because my first pick, I'm actually going going to do a 1A and 1B because there is so much controversy surrounding the first appearance of Wolverine, so I'm going to talk about both books. But uh, let's get into our my first pick here, which is Incredible Hulk 181, the first full appearance of Wolverine. And as you can see here, if you've never seen this book before, this is one of the you know ultimate grails when it comes to uh, collecting not only just the Wolverine character, but, but I would say one of the ultimate grails for everybody who's just a fan of comic books. I mean, so th this right here, Incredible Hulk 181 came out in the 70s. It's a Bronze Age book, and typically speaking, this is the um, this is the Grail book within the Bronze Age. Meaning, like uh, of all the comic books that came out in this period, this uh, I believe is the most expensive book. Um, that came out and because it's the first, known as the first full appearance of Wolverine. And so as you can see here, the di the cover is just absolutely dynamic. It is an incredible, incredible, uh, you know, cover and and obviously, you know, this launched the start of you know one of Marvel's most famous characters of all time, which is Wolverine. Now, I, I mentioned that this is the first full appearance, meaning you know we see Wolverine on the cover uh, and he's fully involved in the story. But technically speaking, if we're talking about you know hard rule definitions of well, when is the first time we ever saw Wolverine? Uh, that book is actually Incredible Hulk 180, the book that was right before 181. And what what happens in this book is you. You see Hulk and he's fighting the Wendigo the entire time. And on the very last page, on the very last panel, we see a cameo appearance of the character Wolverine. And that leads into this book. So, you know, as far as the community is concerned, there's been a lot of discussion and debate over which one is his technical first appearance. I mean, technically speaking, Hulk 180 is his first appearance, but you know, uh, do we want to de uh, describe it as a cameo first appearance versus this, which is a full appearance? So, you know, there is this debate within the community. We don't really need to get into it. Overall, uh, this book right here, 181, has become the winner book in terms of what the market uh, actively actively pursues the most, and you can see that from the numbers. So let's get into it here. Incredible Hulk 181, the first full appearance of Wolverine. If you were going to get this book at a 9.8, you would have to shell out $43,000. As you can see, there's a sale in December of 2020. And then on the low end, uh, you know, if you're going to get a low grade of this book, you're st it's still going to run you around that, you know, $500, $600 mark. So uh, a really, really cool book uh, to get if you are a fan of Wolverine. This is his first full appearance. And of course, if you want to get his first cameo appearance, uh, you can get Incredible Hulk 180. Just quickly to dig into the numbers here, a 9.8 is going to run you $11,000 and a 0.5 is going to run you, you know, that 250 mark or so. So very, very cool book, Incredible Hulk 181, Incredible Hulk 180. No matter how you slice it, it's the first full and or cameo appearance of Wolverine. All right, let's move on now to my second pick, even though this is the third book, but my second pick is going to be Wolverine number one from 1982. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first Wolverine uh, solo series, the first time that they decided to do a story specifically about Wolverine because you know he debuted in The Incredible Hulk and then they utilized him on the X-Men team. Uh, and then they had you know other stories that, that they had Wolverine uh, take, take part in, but this was the first time they 
and decided to do sort of like his own limited series with his name on the top. And this has become a really, really great collector item for a lot of people. Uh, it's a classic pose, it's a classic cover, you know, really, really it conveys a lot of like Wolverine's character in this, you know, with him uh, flashing the claws and, and doing the come here with his other hand. So really, really great cover. And, you know, if we dig into the numbers here, you'll see that the 9.8 will run you around $425. So, you know, definitely within reach uh, for people who want to get their hands on this book. Uh, and then on the low end, you're not going to see any CGC numbers, but typically speaking, I feel like this is the type of book that you generally see going around that, you know, hundred dollar range uh, when you, when you're looking on eBay, if you can find yourself a good deal. All right, let's move on now to my third book. And my third book is actually going to be another Incredible Hulk book. And this one is going to be Incredible Hulk 340. Now, what is the significance of this? This is a, um, an issue, a cover that was drawn by Todd McFarlane, you know, the great Todd McFarlane, classic art artist in the early 90s. And this was him doing a a cover of The Incredible Hulk uh, where they had their sort of rematch, so to speak. So uh, what makes this book so great is not only is the cover amazing, but you know, for a lot of people, this is sort of like the, uh, you know, if you can't get your hands on 181 and you still want to capture like some kind of moment like this, a lot of people have moved to Incredible Hulk 340 as the book that they want to own, uh, you know, to, to hold on to. And this is a, a great Copper Age book, came out in 1988. And this is a great consolation prize overall. Like I think that if you are sort of a fan of the Wolverine character and, and in a fan of Todd McFarlane too. Like this is a great, great comic book to get your hands on. Um, and, and it kind of has that, you know, reference to, uh, you know, the Incredible Hulk moment of 181. And just a sidebar here, when, when we do get Wolverine into the MCU, which, you know, I, I do think that we will eventually get Wolverine into the MCU. Uh, when we do, I, I actually do have a feeling that Kevin Feige is going to want to introduce Wolverine uh, in that same sort of, you know, moment with Incredible Hulk where they like, he, you know, he jumps out of nowhere and starts clawing him in the forest. I, I have a feeling that, that that might be how they would want to introduce uh, Wolverine. And if they, in fact, do that, not only is 181 going to go up, but this Incredible Hulk 340 is 100% is going to blow up as well. I mean, it's already a popular book uh, that people want to pursue, but I feel like if, if, if there is any semblance of Wolverine fighting Incredible Hulk in his debut in the MCU, you're going to see this book uh, also blow up uh, as a result of the appearance. All right, let's go on now into the numbers here for this book uh, in case you want to get your hands on it. And that's going to... Uh, so here to show you at a 9.8, it's going to run you around $700. So definitely uh, a little bit pricey, you know, especially on that, that super, super high end. And then on the bottom here, you're not going to really see uh, too many, you know, low end numbers, but this is a book that generally speaking, I do find on eBay. I'd say around, you know, the $70 mark is, is pretty average for what I see, maybe up to a hundred if you want to find like a raw near mint copy. So definitely still within reach. Uh, this is a book, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta do a little bit of, of, due diligence and look for it, but you can find a good deal if you uh, come across one. All right, let's move on now to my fourth pick here. My fourth pick is actually going to be Wolverine number one from 1988. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first issue of Wolverine's ongoing solo series. So uh, not to be confused with Wolverine number one here, which is the, his first solo story and limited series. You know, this only ran for four issues in 1982. Well, in 1988, they decided to launch Wolverine in his ongoing series. So, you know, the, the one that would actually run uh, for, for many, many, many years to come. So this is Wolverine number one. Um, and, and what's really cool about this series is, you know, this is an awesome team up of Chris Claremont, who obviously the famous X-Men writer. He wrote this, um, a lot of this series and also John Buscema, who is a amazing, amazing historic Marvel artist. And they had a team up in this, you know, the first um, handful of issues with this run. And that makes like, you know, this, this early, early Wolverine really, really special in my mind. And what's cool about this is, you know, this is a, a book that is generally speaking pretty affordable. I mean, you know, it's not it's not a, it's not a free book. You know, every every LCS you go to, if they have a copy of this, they're going to put it on their wall. But but you can find good prices for this, and I think that this is a book that will always continue to grow um, to gain value um, for sure. Because this is just you know, it's a classic Wolverine book. It's the first appearance of a rendition of his character known as Patch. It's the first uh, 
you know, ongoing for his series. That was his 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 historic run of a series. Um, and you know, it's just a great sort of Copper Age book. So uh, if we dig into the numbers here at 9.8, it's going to run you around the $220 mark. And then all the way here at the bottom, you're not going to find. Uh, many numbers here in CGC, but as far as like uh, raw books on eBay, uh, if you're searching through, you're gonna see this book around anywhere from like, you know, 40, 50, 60, maybe $70, uh, depending on what kind of deal you find. So great, great book, 1988 Wolverine number one. All right, let's go on now to my last pick. And my last pick is something that you know, to me is just an awesome book and an awesome cover and, and has a little bit of significance, you know, within uh, the history of the creators who made it. And that's going to be Wolverine number 27. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is uh, the 27th issue in his solo run, which I just referenced with Wolverine number one. Uh, but this is a, a cover art done by Jim Lee. And everybody knows Jim Lee, who, you know, he currently runs DC, but Jim Lee uh, had a huge hand in drawing for the X-Men and writing X-Men as well, uh, you know, in the, in the early 90s. And also he did work on Wolverine. And this is uh, just a sort of a classic cover that he created uh, for Wolverine, you know, in, in 1990. And what I like about this book is, you know, this is one of those books that I think as, you know, a collector is, is this is uh, a kind of an iconic post to me because they actually use this cover art, I feel like in a lot of, you know, key art uh, within, you know, the comic book space, um, whether it be, you know, advertisements for, for comic books uh, within Marvel Comics. They use this art like on video games for, for Wolverine and the X-Men. You've seen this on posters. And then, so this is like, you know, an, sort of an instant classic, uh, you know, art piece that I feel like has expanded beyond just its use on the comic book. And for that reason, I kind of feel like this is a almost an underrated uh, comic book uh, that people want to own, you know, kind of like when, when I compare it to something like Incredible Hulk 340, where it's like a sort of a classic cover, like people uh, actually, you know, the price of this book, um, you know, demonstrates that it is a classic cover and that people want to get their hands on it. Whereas this one, this is one that I, I think you can find on eBay, you know, $10, $15, you know, it's, it's really, really affordable. So this is one that I feel like hasn't necessarily caught on in the same sort of way as far as it being, you know, recognized as a classic piece of art. But, you know, being that it's a Jim Lee drawing, it's a Wolverine, uh, they've used this this pose so many times in, in different ways in, you know, Marvel comics and video games and things like that. I think that this is a book that I would actually consider very, very underrated as a collector item. But uh, let's get, in, get into the numbers here. And as you can see, on a 9.8 CGC, it is going to run you hundred around the $180 mark. But if we're talking about raws, you know, things on eBay, you know, you're looking at that sort of, uh, you know, I've seen it go anywhere from 10 to 15 to $20, depending on, you know, if you're, if you're lucky. Uh, but yeah, Wolverine number 27, that is going to be my, you know, fifth pick here. And it is just an instant classic cover to me by Jim Lee. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Those are my five picks for, you know, key comic books uh, as they relate to the Wolverine character. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys own any of these books? Uh, do you guys have any other key or grail comic books that you want to pursue uh, when you're fans of Wolverine? Again, Wolverine is an amazing character, one of Marvel's biggest. There's so many grail books when it comes to this character. So I, you know, I couldn't talk about all of them, but let me know in the comics if you guys have any that you really like, or if you guys own any of these books. And also let, let me know in the comics, uh, you know, for this series, uh, what character would you like to see next, whether it's a superhero or a supervillain? Let me know. Drop me a like, comment, or subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.